we here what are we doing what are we saying happy taco tuesday everybody right dust free black woman is here who me is here sg is here mistress roll god damn it you're here okay vn training religion free divested nor non-blackistan vibes on and on and on and on and on i hope that you guys had a beautiful king day right in the black community right King Day is pretty peaceful, right? Don't know fights and drugs and guns go on. Because Martin Luther, the king, was a peaceful man. A God-fearing man. Right? You come together. You have your barbecues. You talk about how oppressed you are. All the fathers are there for their fucking children. Oh, that's not what happens? Uh, I, got, I got it wrong. What happens then? I want to get to a new alert that we are tracking this morning out of Fort Pierce. Overnight, at least eight people were shot at a Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebration. Ooh, Becky lying on y'all again, huh? Oh, my goodness. Whoa. You mean to tell me that there was violence at a Kang situation? Come on, Beck. You be an extra. You, you and the ape tell me what's up. St. Lucie investigators say one person is in critical condition right now. They tell us it happened at Ellis Park after an MLK car show. Deputies say there was a disagreement leading up to the gunfire. That celebration turned chaotic, of course. At least four other people may be hurt. 
it's really unfortunate and it's sad that during a celebration of someone who represented peace and equality that a, dis a, a disagreement results in a use of guns and violence to solve that disagreement. The sheriff's office has not released word on any arrests right now. We will keep you updated as we get more information about those injured. They out still on the street. You mean to tell me the so-called slave catching oppressors have not found who shot eight motherfuckers at a King Day barbecue? Come on now. Uh-uh. I'm not going for this. They are lying on these people. Fuck you mean. These people are very, very nice people. Just family-oriented people that caught a raw deal and everybody's lying on them. What the fuck? I, I'm... I'm, I'm tripping. No, that, that story can't be true. Because usually when you get around black folk, it's very, very peaceful. <clears throat> Panel. It we'll get to the part. subject. We get to the, we'll get to the <laughs> subject in a second. I gotta act stupid I, It was the Brad on the news acting surprise for me. It's like, come on. <laughs> Did you hear what he was saying? Like, you don't know what to expect from this crowd. Like, they don't. I've already said they do not have the skills to properly de-escalate a situation using non-violent tactics. They cannot do it. And he's sitting up there talking like, how could he represent such non-violence? And, you know, <laughs> we don't understand how how this could have gotten out of hand. I mean, come on, look at what, who you're dealing with. When you see a crowd of these things, run as fast as you can in the other direction. Do not attempt to engage none because I guarantee you the more and more of them show up, the later and later it gets. Somebody's going to air the place out. Somebody's going to pull out a gun and start shooting up the place. Or so a whole bunch of them going to start fighting. The more liquor they get in them, it's going to be a whole It's going to be a whole mess. They do not know how to handle their liquor. They do not know how to act. Stay the fuck away from these people. Sure. Aaliyah, he had to be on cold, uh, on code. You know what I mean? Like that, he knows, but he had to make, well, he had to represent like he doesn't know. I know that's why I was laughing because that, I mean, you could clearly tell he didn't even believe what he was saying. He was trying to keep a straight face, but yeah. Look, Tiana, I know the Alabama player agrees. What you mean? You think you you don't talk to a black man when he wants to get your phone number and shit? What do you think? You got rights? No, you don't have rights. Tonight, ladies, the topic is this, okay? You see a lot of people using excuses not to open up their fucking options because they're so-called not attracted to non-black men, specifically white men. Let me go ahead and repeat this for the 50th time, probably the 100th time if you want to keep it real. Your divestment is not about dating and it's not about white folk. There. Part of it, if you are on the market though, is dating. Now, historically, women, I'm talking about thousands of years, going thousands of years back, have always been attracted to providers, protectors, people that were going to protect their children and provide for them, problem solvers, builders, powerful men. That's what women have always been attracted to. Stability, comfort, knowing good and well, if the shit hit the fan, my baby got this. I know he does. Well, to say black women, that you're not part of that woman group, because that's what you're saying. Make no mistake about it. When you say you're only attracted to black men, you're saying that your whole womanhood is completely different than every other woman on this fucking planet when it comes to attraction, because that group that you call yourself attracted to, they do nothing of the sort. Nothing of the sort. We already know they don't problem solve. They cause problems. They don't protect. They told you that out your own mouth. And guess what? They let you get enslaved so that alone should let you they're not going to protect you um they can't provide because their provisions come from your stupid ass so you sitting here telling me you still attracted to that i think you forcing it i don't believe you i think you're trying to make them feel good you need more people there's no way on earth that you as a woman are not attracted to men with power that can protect provide and problem solve i don't believe you i don't after that being said I don't think any of the qualities that make a man good, I don't think black men possess any of them. And I've selected 10 and you cut me off 
and tell me where on earth black men are known for having such quality. I'll wait. Let's go. Number one, emotionally available. Now, this is a tricky one. With being emotionally available, this means that if you're having a bad day, you, woman, you, having a bad day, you're going through something, you're experiencing grief, your, your mom died, whatever you're going through that day, your other half is like, come here, babe, let's talk about it. He's there, he's available to you. Now, black men are emotionally available for you to be vomited upon about how bad he has it out here. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. Aaliyah, can you, can, you, can you expand on that, please? I mean, we know that they're not emotionally available. You actually took the words out of my mouth. Like, they're, they would rather dump all their problems and their oppression onto you and complain to you about how rough they had it. They don't give a shit what's going on with you and your problems and all this other shit. So, of course, they're not emotionally available. There was a, a study done about that as well. So, they only care about themselves. So, no, of course not. What's up, Snapple? I know you're getting ready to go in. <laughs> hey, happy Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday. So happy to be here. That's what's um, up. You know, I honestly feel like these mammies, they're not necessarily not attracted. I believe they just have such low self-worth and self-esteem that they feel more comfortable with an ashy, musty, dusty cicada. <laughs> you know, they just don't, they feel intimidated by the even the thought of another group of men um, even being ro romantically interested in them. But yeah, to the point, yes, absolutely. Um, cicadas are definitely not emotionally available. They will beat your ass if you if you try to go ahead and, you know open up to them about something and expect them to be there for you. They will, they will get upset with you. That will, that might pop off some shit. So the so majority try, of them, try. well, all of them, to be honest with you, were raised that they were the most important. Anytime they're having issues, all the women in that group are supposed to come. Fuck it. Let's see. Let's see what she got to say here. Cause, cause this is, you know, the normal black household. Let's go. Urban black men are taught to think of only themselves and urban black women are taught to think of everyone but themselves. And here's why I say that. I had an older brother, right? And my mother raised him to, you know, she raised him in love, honey. He knew his mama loves him because she didn't really expect too much from him. I remember him being like 16 years old. She was filling out his job application. Baby, I was living since I was 14, okay? Because it was already translated to me through my mother's behavior. That bitch ain't nobody gonna take care of you but yourself, okay? But for my brother, it was translated to him through her actions. That I'ma always have you, baby. I'ma always love you. And those kind of men grew up to feel like that women are gonna always have them and always love them despite the shit that you put them through. And just like black women my age, We've been raised to feel like we got to get it on our own. That's the problem. She's absolutely correct. You do have to get it on your own. Now, what I'm saying is you need to get the fuck out of that community. You know damn well that that community produces those type of dudes. They daddy ain't there, okay? We already know that's a fucking problem. But sometimes when they daddy there, they still like that. I just, I don't get the shit. But this is what's coming out of there. If you're sitting at the uh, end of the reel waiting for a goddamn hamburger to come out of a pizza hut, you got life fucked up because that's what you're actually doing. There is no de denying that this is what's coming out of the black community. Coddled, infantilized, punk ass motherfuckers. That's all that's there. They're the only ones that matter. Their well-being, their emotional health, their physical health, their protection, all that shit. And you don't matter. As a matter of fact, you are supposed to be the one overseeing his well-being. But, Shane. See, see, see now, sisters. Let me tell you, you got it all wrong. They only acting like that because we're not breathing enough life into <laughs> the caves. See, we as women, the original, the uh, original woman, the mother of civilization. If we, we give birth to life. We give birth to love. And since we Girl. give birth to the what man, the whole we, ha <laughs> what, what, what? we have to, we have to continue to breathe that life into him, to lift okay. him up and keep him protected. 
protected from the ills and all the enemies of the world here in America. Ka-ka-ka. You feel me? Sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Ebony Phoenix? That, look, that's not too far off how they talk. Just keep it real with you. Them bitches get on my nerves. Fuck yourself with that onk, Ebony. <laughs> Fuck yourself with the onk? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh that's interesting. Um well, yeah, I mean, you did say something very interesting about whether daddy's there or not, they all come out dusty. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's true because it, even, especially if daddy's not there, but even if daddy's there, the community and daddy will basically let them know that the world, you know, the, the world is there for them. Okay. It's the complete and polar opposite from what they tell the girls. And this is why, despite all that oppression, suppression, slavery, yada, 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 Jim Crow, Black women still rise and the guys stay down on the ground like a lead balloon. That's why. And now the guys are getting mad. Well, you, you're you not talking to me? You think you're better than me? Pow. I, That's what just happened so with the ins- Alabama basketball player. Yes, yes. That girl was gorgeous. She had nothing to do with him. And he, there he goes. You're not talking to me. Bam. You know, they are so entitled. They're dangerous. Mm-hmm. Do you hear me? They don't understand the, the huge disservice they do these men. I said it before I said it, and I'll say it again. You, They do them no favors when they put out these messages. What you're doing is telling the world that you have the most conquered, the most subjugated, the most defeated group of men on the planet, that they need all this extra help, that they cannot function without their women. And it's embarrassing. It really is. And they don't understand when you put that shit out there, you are basically castrating them in front of everybody you're not doing them any favors by constantly saying that shit you're letting everybody know how weak your group of men are I mean it's just it's sad and it's pathetic stop fucking doing it you're not helping it's the thirst for me they need the programs maybe they need some programs to and show them how man fuck them to be programs and programs ain't doing a goddamn thing thank you There's they, but see that's what I'm do. saying that's what them, I'm saying. Oh, we need to help them. We need to da da da. It's like, why don't you put a program in place so that they know how to be a fucking human being? Uh, they, they, they don't know how. I'm a sorry, program Nefertiti. wouldn't help. No, them. go ahead, Nefertiti. No, it's just they don't know how to be emotionally available. And I, and this is my father to a T. Like I'm, in, I grew up in a house where my father was there, and he was quote unquote a unicorn and made good money. But could I go to him and cry and say, "Daddy, I'm upset. I'm scared." Or something? please. He basic. I was raised to be tough. Be strong was all I ever fucking heard. Let's they, not they don't know that anything. Black men hate their children. That's just about that. men. They, they hate their children. Um, a lot of times when they stay with these families, they don't see a better option. And their family sometimes is a placeholder until they find something what they deem better. But make no mistake about it. They can't stand their children. They can't. They detest them. Even with that program talk, it's just more embarrassing for them. This is the only group of men that actually needs a program to show them, tell them, teach them how to be men. What other group of men needs this sort of help? Thank you. Let me know. But but also they would they would bastardize the program. Give them any kind of program. They would they would turn it around and turn it inside out, make it ashy and dusty and degenerate so fast. They can't benefit from anything there's no helping them there's no there's no rehabilitating them programs are not the answer it's just get the fuck away from them and try to be- your best to act like they don't fucking exist now remember well, i said whenever you see something that black men are known for up here on this screen you stop me and say dz you a motherfucking lie bitch because black men are known for da 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 pull up i'm waiting commitment minded Really? Really? Them motherfuckers can't even commit to their children. They're not going to commit to you. I don't, for the mothers out there, I remember having my child, and my, my oldest daughter, and when I saw her face, I was instantly in love, okay? That was, that, that, the feeling that came across me, it was, it was amazing. 
I don't know how you can look at your child that you made and hate it. They hate their children. They don't want nothing to do with it. They deny their children. So they're not committing to them. And that's their flesh and blood. Your stupid ass standing right there waiting for a commitment. On top of that, you let him go test the waters, come back, baby, I'm sorry. Whenever he's going broke or whenever homegirl done said she had enough, y'all ping ponging them back and forth. Y'all so fucked up that sometimes y'all agree to share. I can't, I can't do this with y'all. Commitment, my, do you talk about the same group of men who make songs about this shit, who rap about it, who laugh about it, who think it's funny and it's cute to run through as many women as possible and treat women like disposable toys and something to be played around with and banged and thrown away like tissue, paper towels, shit like that. Black Women are disposable to them. So mm -hmm. commitment minded. They don't think that they're men. That's their idea of manhood, how much pussy they can get. They want to run through as many women as possible, and they call it sewing their royal or their wild oats or whatever. That's what they call that bullshit. So a commitment mind, it was the commitment. I think, What's that? I think black women get confused when people say black men hate black women, but I think they don't think that black men can fuck something that they hate, and you need to get over that because it's absolutely true. They can fuck you and still hate you. There's not enough ass you can throw in a circle that's going to make these niggas like you. I'm, it just is what it is. Of course. How many times have they said pussy don't have no face? Or <laughs> it don't matter when the lights go out. Okay, they they oh, so it don't matter. A lot of niggas will fuck you front and back so they don't have to look in your face. What the fuck that means? <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm just keeping it real. We all grown here. The angels said that they're not what they do. There might be why a lot of motherfuckers love dog style a little too much. That and the fact that they love ass as well. Mm -hmm. It don't matter who that ass belongs to. Let me throw that in there. <laughs> uh, male or yeah. female. Let's keep it real. Go ahead, Snapple. I was going to say, DZ, you just dropped some bars in the beginning of this slide about how they, they won't even be committed or loyal to their children. And it's like, yeah, they hate their children. But specifically, they they hate their daughters. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? They they hate their daughters to a point where, if you are a daughter of a cicada and you are lucky enough to not get unalived, you're gonna be abused at minimum, and then you won't even have the support. You won't even be able to go to your father for anything. So absolutely. So anybody that's even considering them as a so-called man or a prospect like yeah they i mean it i mean that's that's a code to live by if somebody can't be loyal and they're present for their children they can't be anything for you hmm. it is what it is let's go to number three real quick can i jump in here absolutely i want to agree with you snapple and the other sisters on the panel we don't need any more programs because the black man's mind has already Girl. been programmed <laughs> has already been programmed like tonight. <laughs> i'm sorry you gotta let me you gotta let me speak this truth here my sister <laughs> the black man's mind in america has already been programmed by white supremacy to be loyal to white supremacy and therefore and forthwith and thereon he cannot be committed my he cannot be have his mind committed to this people because it's already been programmed to be committed to white supremacy by who the <laughs> white man. Girl, okay, well, it, is, I know she faking and that shit yeah. still aggravating as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> but here's the thing. She really What's the, what about the folks in Africa who have never been to America <laughs> and they're still white supremacists? Explain mm -hmm. that to me. Oh, well, they, well, you see, they were invaded by the 10 white men on the two boats and they came in to the motherland, uh, mm -hmm. uh, not Africa, mm -hmm. but Kemet, Kemet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. and they took Girl. over Africa and Wait they brainwashed <laughs> all of the continent to, uh, to uh, be committed to white supremacy. That's what happened, my. Bless you, DZ. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. I was waiting for that. We, we, we good. Girl, 
I can't take it. I want to take one of them bitches out back and let's just put some Vaseline on our face and duke it out. Because them hoes get on my nerves with that shit. And they funky ass tarantula head niggas get on my nerves with it too. Uh, it's respectful. Check it out. This is one of the last words you think of when you think of Anika. This quite possibly is at the top of the list of the last thing you think of when somebody says, describe a black man. This ain't going to come up. I don't know who the fuck a man needs to respect you. If that, it, it, it should go without saying. They should respect you. But you pretending like there are some respectful ones, so-called left, ma'am, they can't respect you if they really don't like want to be around you, knowing that you're the mother of their children, knowing that you're the reason they're even alive, and they call you thought, skeezer, ho, bitch cunt i mean the list goes on and on and on and you still out here taking your ass to tiktok making 30 second videos about how awesome they are and all this shit here They're, they don't have any respect for you and the fact that you're still looking for it is making the rest of the globe not have any respect for you i just want to keep that real the way you are thirsting the way you are begging waiting and compromising your ass off and not having no standards not only black men not gonna have respect for you the rest of the world won't either Anybody or posting pictures saying that you don't care what they say, but obviously you do care what they say. If you're posting pictures trying to prove them wrong, thirst trapping all over the place when you need to not be thirst trapping because nobody's thirsty for that. But I mean, that's a whole thing, too. So, this notion of respect coming from the black man uh, went out the window a long time ago. They have done nothing but shout from the rooftops telling everyone around the globe exactly what they think of you. And none of it was respectful. They put it in the music. They put it online. As soon as somebody gave them a microphone, they got their podcast. They have been screaming from any platform that they could get on, whether it was Twitter, whether it was YouTube, no matter what it was, that they don't want anything to do with you. You are the worst women on the planet to even try to mess around with. So I don't get where this respectful shit is coming from. This is what they're not. See, that's what this list is. Easy. I, I figured it out. You put up here everything the black man is not. Honestly, that's what it is. I was pulling from things black women and women in general should be expecting from their mate. Okay, at least 9 out of 10, 8 out of 12, something. But they can't pull anything while they're diving into that disgusting septic tank called Blackistan. They can't. See, they, I'm sorry. I was just about to say, they don't have respect for anybody or anything, not even themselves. They don't know what respect is. These are some of the most rude, disrespectful ass men on the planet. What do they do that, that, that shows that they have even an ounce of respect for black men? Check it out. Now, you guys... You're always trying to protect black men. You're, you're screaming from the rooftops how disrespected they are, blah, blah, fucking blah. I get tired of that shit. I really do. Now, I'm going to show you something real quick with this black woman who's also the phenotype that black men absolutely hate. And she's talking to a white guy about how police brutality and everybody's arresting black folk and black men and blah, 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 blah. Wait till you see what happens after she says that. Black men are killed at traffic stops, black women included. I mean, there are unjust killings in jail that mysteriously, I mean, these men kill young black men and then walk free. Your life and your privilege is fine, but black people are dying. Do you agree with what was just stated there as a, as a black male? No. Okay, I, you didn't even have to think about it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Y'all are out of your fucking mind. Homeboy didn't even let him finish the sentence. Nope. Throw that bitch <laughs> up under the bus. They don't have a problem with them people like you think they do, uh, ma'am. You have a problem with them. In order to keep you in line, they'll tell you that they got a problem with them too. And they fucking us up. Look, black men don't have a problem with white men. Let me say that again. Black men do not have a problem with white men. They don't. Any goddamn I'm sure way. her face cracked soon as he said that because he didn't even care enough to try to back you up. See, you're trying to stand with him, but he ain't trying to stand with you. That should tell you something, sis, because you he got you looking a damn fool like 
I mean, but they make them look that they got them down bad. They've been looking like that for a while. You look like a fool trying to stand beside him and take up for him. And when it's his turn to step up to the microphone, this is what they do each and every single time. Like I said, the motherfuckers are treasonous. And you want to know why he didn't agree with her? Because he looking at he looking for his daughter or his granddaughter or that his part. niece or somebody like that. That's who he trying to get next to, bitch. He wants to what you was talking about. And the thing and is, black women have just thrown away their power and the respect for themselves in order to lift men up on their shoulders who don't, who only shit on them. That's also, looking like an idiot. Honestly, I think he talked like that because there was two white men in his face. Let's just put it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go there because, like, if that was true, if that was, if he was on a panel with some, you know, black males, he probably talked a whole different game. But Zaddy was right there with the mic and said, so, sir, <laughs> what is your opinion? He was like, no, Masa, I don't know what she's talking about, Masa. We okay over here, Masa. So that, 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 that's what I heard. But please continue. Yeah, okay. Kind and loving. Do we even got to go over this shit? They don't open doors for you. They don't pull out chairs for you. They don't help you with your bills with your big provider ass. Huh? They don't make sure other motherfuckers respect you. As a matter of fact, they go ahead and add to any vitriol that somebody has for you. And you stay. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing kind and loving about a nigga. I don't even think we got to stay on that one. Let's go to the next one. Emotionally intelligent. This. Let me tell you why this is important. Last time we was up here, it was a motherfucker with black eyes because she got her ass beat up here. We seen a whole lot of ass whoopings throughout the life of this channel. Emotionally intelligent. Someone that's emotionally intelligent knows how to have a disagreement and walk away. These motherfuckers have a disagreement with you and beat the fucking brake pads off of you. Do you hear me? They're always shooting. They're always snapping. They're always doing some shit that an overgrown toddler would do when they don't get their way. There is nothing emotionally intelligent about them. That's why you wear them shades. Them ain't no stunner shades, bitch. I know your face swollen up under there. They constantly beating on you with something, beating on your children. Hell, they beating up their mama, beating up every goddamn body because they lack emotional intelligence. Somebody that's emotionally intelligent knows how to read the room. And if the room doesn't fit, they walk away. That's what grown men do. Grown men do. Okay, Snapple? Absolutely. I agree with everything that you said. And they lack impulse control. You know, if you're not, if you're not appeasing them, you better watch out. You better duck. Um, and I also wanted to agree with what Aaliyah said a few minutes ago as, as far as them making it known publicly through music and podcasts that they hate you. You mm -hmm. know, they smacking black women upside the head with skateboards. They're recording these acts. I mean, now that we have TikTok and social media, they are taking every opportunity to record and document their hatred. And even with shout out to Steven Crowder, because I like him. OK, um, <laughs> that was the Brad in the video before. Um, yeah, he you know, even in that video, that that thing literally disagreed with her just because she was a black woman. If she had been a Becky in that chair saying the same exact thing to Crowder, she, uh, he might have agreed with her, um, her. It's just any opportunity. It's just a, an, it's a, an instinct to disagree with you at minimum and you better hope that's all they do is disagree with you and not fuck you up they think with their dicks even that's when all they care about me. that's true even when that's all they care about me. that's that's the fact of the matter even when they go to the multi-letter mafia they don't even choose each other did you hear what i said to you I mean, when they get yeah. serious about their life and commitment and they're part of the multi-letter mafia they don't choose each other Take a look at that, ladies. This I mean, they're not emotionally intelligent. They're not intelligent at all. And see, that's the thing. When you we when you go back to what makes a man really sexy outside of his looks, 
I find intelligence to be very sexy. The ability to be able to hold a real conversation about real shit and not just a bunch of shallow bullshit. The majority of them can't do that. The majority of them can't string together two sentences. The majority of them sound like they've been hit in the head with bats. They sound damn near brain damaged now. So it's like you can't have a real conversation with them. They don't have any type of intelligence at all whatsoever trying to talk to them or trying to reason with them. It's like trying to reason with the five-year-old. I take three. I get three. They, they sound much younger than five. These men are like overgrown toddlers, like you were just saying. They don't have any emotional intelligence. They don't have any intelligence at all. Emotional intelligence requires you to be able to look at another person and it'll put yourself in their shoes, not saying you have to feel every emotion they're feeling, but you have to have the capacity to at least understand their point of view or where they're coming from, from an emotional standpoint. They are not capable of doing that because it goes back to, I don't know if it was the first or the second thing of everything is about them. So when they look at someone else, they don't see that person's pain. They don't see that person. They can both be angry, but they can't see the other person's anger. All they know is their own. And well, everyone, they're not built for this. They're not built for relationships. They're just no, not. They're not. There's no other way around the shit. They're not built for that shit, nor do they desire to be, mammy. I mean, we they have no empathy. Shit. They're not even emotionally available. Of course, they're not going to be emotionally intelligent. That's why I say they don't have any, they lack intelligence all around completely. You're not emotionally available. You're not emotionally intelligent. Of course, you can't even read, read the room. How do we expect you to be able to identify with the emotions of others? They don't have any emotions. Pro white male leadership, you're up here, but you haven't said anything. What you got on this, ma'am? Oh, um, thank you for having me again. Well, um, I think that you already know how I feel. I'm mm -hmm. pretty much done and you are doing a wonderful job. I just wanted to let you know that. Well, thank you, Pro White Male Leadership. That's what's up. It's always good to see you. Absolutely. I'm here for you guys. Thank you. What the fuck is next on this list that these monsters that's coming between your legs don't have good communicator y'all now if y'all are paired off and you are with someone okay my husband loves sports absolutely loves sports you know how at the end of the game the team that wins they start interviewing the players they sound like they have a traumatic brain injury let me let me explain they could literally ask them, what was the game plan for the night? How did you guys overcome this? Well, you know what I'm saying? Coach was doing It's like, what the fuck is going on? Is he dying? Has he had a stroke? They all sound like that. It's one monotone, long ass fucking word. Go look it up. Every time a microphone is in their face, they sound like they have a traumatic brain injury. Just like those rappers. No. They, they, they sound terrible. No, Terrible. Jeezy, you don't understand. See, we, we you know, we we did the uh, best we could. You know, we we went in there, we played the game uh, with our heart and uh. See, but I um, understand yeah. you. Sometimes I can't even understand what they're saying. It's like, babe, do you have to watch the interview part of the game over? Get rid of this shit, huh? They sound terrible. Being a good communicator, I mean, all of these go hand in hand. It goes back to the emotional intelligence. And you know availability. The thing is, how can you be a good communicator? They had they, these are skills that they lack. They have no resolution skills. Talk. They don't know how to talk to people. They don't even know how to have a regular, normal conversation with people without getting ass hurt all the time. These are some of the most emotional men ever. They claim women are emotional. We're not emotional. They are. They can't take constructive criticism. They can't take rejection. They can't take anything. If you're not worshiping them or bowing down, kissing their asses, then what, what you mean good communication? There is nothing to talk about. Your communication should consist of either praising them all the time or feeling sorry for them in their situation that's the only thing they really want to hear from you, you but have you know, to be a, okay. go ahead boom you know dz they have what what do they call it aav like they came up with a whole term what does that stand for african-american vernacular i think yeah yeah and it's all that ghetto ghetto babble mammy speak bullshit to, to like kind of justify and make it okay that they talk are you like serious that. yeah like yes so like, 
They don't have to be articulate. They don't have to enunciate. They don't have to have a vast vocabulary. They can literally sit up there and talk like, like how you imitated them, DZ. And everybody's supposed to be okay with it. And if anybody holds them to a standard where they should be able to communicate effectively, that's racist. That's the white man. Thing. They just too dumb to learn another language. One second. That I is. just wanted to say this one thing before I forget. Um, Dizzy, you had said earlier in the live that divestment is not all about dating and blah, blah, blah. I just want to say I'm grateful for this list, for you making this list and for us being allowed to talk about this because you all men are bad brigade ass bitches are not about to gaslight us into shutting the fuck up about our dating preferences because for those of us that are heterosexual and we do want a man we don't want the Kangs. We, I, I prefer a white man, and I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what to look out for and the compare and contrast. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. You ain't got to explain I'm yourself so to them. Fuck them hoes. Yeah, and I'm so glad you said it. Because, see, I think we've already established that the majority of Black women don't exercise good judgment, nor do they have any taste where the men are concerned, especially when we look at the type of men that these women claim are so attractive. So it's really no shocker that they still don't understand what makes a man truly sexy does not lie within his looks. And this is why I've always liked white men. I've always been into white men. But it's not just even just about just white men. There are other groups of men that I can name something that I find so sexy about them and it's not always related to their looks black women can't say that because their men don't have that I mean it's not just it some men just have a surgeon and say why and it's like mm -hmm. it's, you can't even explain it but see they call it swag and what their swag consists of is walking around with their pants hanging off their asses with them sounding crazy but when you look at other groups of men and you like damn his eyes and his hair he's just so he's a beautiful man and it's like even when it comes to Asian men people sleep on Asian men they really do I ain't even gonna lie but when it comes to Asian men that I look at like Russell Wong that is one sexy ass Asian dude and Remington Hoffman you can't tell me shit you cannot tell me that man is not fine man I don't give a damn you got to be blind and there ain't what nothing wrong with admiring them and I'm so sick of hearing divestment is not about dating divestment is not about dating well guess what bitch if you want to date it is bitch shit what the fuck mm -hmm. oh no it's true and then look I don't know if anybody has ever practiced any martial art the amount of willpower, determination, fortitude you have to have. And these are these are men who come. This is where they, their people created Kung Fu and these martial arts. To me, that is sexier than hell to have well, that I kind mean, of response. The, the, the whole tip's going to get you for that. They claim they created that. They turned on the light when God said, let there be light. They also created suntan lotion, even though they don't have to use something. Name something that the whole tip say that a nigga ain't create. I'll wait. Oh, my God. Well, I mean, that's the sad thing is, though, when, you know, I, I, I went, took my daughter to Taekwondo one time. And there, because there's this, the instructor was there with his sister. He was so beautiful. Me, the Becky, Maylene, uh, Maria, everybody was just melting over in the corner. When he, <laughs> he came. Y'all already yeah. know what I like a country ass, conservative ass, tall ass, smart ass white man that can chop some wood. Bitch. Girl. Girl. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Oh, ain't nothing, nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Cause see, when I go out with a man, I'm looking for specific things like: is he respectful? Is he rude? Does he open doors? That includes the car door. Does he know how to treat a lady? Is he cheap? Does he expect me to be cheap by default? Is he just looking to waste my time by doing cheap and free shit? Because make no mistake about it, I can pay for all my own shit. So I can stay home and watch my own Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime. I can order and cook all of my own food. And if I have to do that, I'll be doing it alone with you out of my face. I don't need any help to do shit like that. And I've never had to pump any gas, take out any trash, touch any grocery bags or do any heavy lifting. I've that never part, even had to crank part. my car and drive it. I've never had to crank my own car and drive it even when it was sitting on a full tank of gas and my man still took me anywhere I wanted to go. I've never even had to cross the parking lot when he dropped me off at the front door. That part! Talking. It's shit like that that I'm talking about. That's what makes a man fucking sexy. Shit, I shouldn't even have to tell you to do. 
Another that driving thing up onto they, the curb so you don't touch the actual road when you get out the car. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that kind or of stuff. Or they, they will make you walk on the inside if you're coming down the sidewalk. Yes. They make you walk on the inside so that, you know, you're not exposed to the street or other right. people. Hey, mammies, I know we speak in a different language because you don't know nothing about that with your provider ass. Provide that shit, breadwinner. Protect that nigga so he don't come and back you up soon as the white dude say. Do you agree with her? Uh, no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> they don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> really? Trustworthy? Really? You cannot trust this nigga around your debit card. You can't trust him about around your best friend. You can't trust him around your children, your purse. Right. None of that shit. OK, you sitting up there calling the bank, talking about it's a charge of seventy five dollars from April 15th on my. And that's not mine. They pull up the surveillance camera and your nigga up there buying some shit for another bitch on top of that. That's what y'all doing. That's what y'all doing. These stories never stop coming. Because soon as you get your fucking heart broke, you on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, taking them dumbass pictures. I found him doing this because you're looking to trauma bond with somebody and the bitches that told you, Hey, he ain't no good. They looking back there like, mm, I'm not even going to put a reaction on this shit, but we see you and it's embarrassing. And guess what? Black men know you're not going anywhere. They're going to keep doing this shit. Y'all have even started sharing on purpose. Like I said, so he doesn't have to be honest with you about nothing. He doesn't have to be honest with you about how much he makes because you're you're expected to pay half the bills as long as he come up with about 15 percent, you know, for the hamburger helper. Right. He got the hamburger helper. You pay the mortgage. Y'all living like this for real, for real. Right. And then if he if you get tired of his motherfucking ass, his mama take him in. All you black women that's on this shit need to you need to stop. You need to stop. Anybody got anything on trustworthiness? Because I, I think it goes without saying you can't trust a NECA. I mean, of course not. You cannot trust them. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's okay. I was just going to say, like, the betrayal is, it can be small, uh, quote unquote, small, like, fucking with your debit card behind your back. But then it also, it, the levels of untrustworthiness, it's too vast. It's ridiculous. Like, just stay mm -hmm. away. Like, they could either steal from you or they could literally, like, unalive you or somebody that you care about and it's just too risky to fuck around with you i mean you can't you can't trust them with anything nope. you can't even you can't even hand them the the card and say hey can you take care of x y and z bill and they they're not gonna do it like i mean oh my god I, we could go we could sit here all day and talk about how untrustworthy they are and all the ways that they can betray your trust so yeah no they're Absolutely. the animals you can't trust them with the animals Someone that's just said they can't even trust them with their own mothers. <laughs> that's <laughs> true, because when we was here last time, you know what we talked about. He done, yeah. he done fucked his mama, y'all. I can't. Secure attachment style. Let me tell you what that means, okay? You're in a relationship. It's brand spanking new. And as time goes on, you get closer and closer, and things become a little bit more exclusive. Black men, when they're insecure which they're most likely insecure because they are the bottom on the totem pole in society. Start checking your phone, start checking where you're going, start just double checking on shit that you're doing. Let me tell you something, black men that act that way, they're going to fuck you up. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Secure attachment style means that he's not being overbearing, trying to boss you around. These niggas out here said they want you to be submissive. So right off top, they want to boss you around. So if he's displaying any of this, just wait and you will be a victim of DV, period. Okay, that's not healthy. Right. And you're misinterpreting that as love. That's not love. He doesn't trust you. He already knows that he's fucked up in the game. He's broke. He's, he's dusty. He's all that shit there. And he's scared that you might find out he's dusty. So in order to keep you from finding out that he's dusty, he becomes overbearing. He starts beating on you and the kids. He starts telling you those shorts are too short. Why were you talking to the dude at your job, even though you have to talk to the dude at your job? That shit ain't cute. And y'all think that shit is love and it's not. He is just waiting to ball his fist and put a K-Wang on your ass. And Anybody? This type of insecurity is rooted 
I mean, it is root. This type of attachment is rooted in jealousy and insecurity. They're not confident in themselves and their relationship. is It's about control. They need to control you. And I, I had when I was still back when I was still dealing with black men, the very last black man I dealt with, he had this issue very bad. You know, when they want to control everything you do, down to which how you dress, how you eat, what you eat, where you go who you can talk to. A lot of women think that, that oh, that's just, oh, he's been overprotective. He loves me. He wouldn't be acting like this if he didn't care about me. Bullshit, run the other way. And I'm telling Stop you, the I've been there. Stop the presses. If you take a look at the comment section, Leah says, so a distant, unavailable partner is ideal. See, this is the type of person, this is the type of person that thinks a man checking your phone Right, telling you what to wear and all that shit. This is a prime example of somebody that will get the brake pads beat off of them, right? Because they think that shit is love. You're misinterpreting that shit. There's healthy ways to be close, healthy ways to be close. But you, you got to have the bullshit and it ends up in domestic violence. I thoroughly explained to you that that is not love. If you want that, go get it and I'll cover your motherfucking story proudly too. I will make you proud of me because I will cover everything about that story facts only. So if you want somebody that's unhealthy and insecure, all in your face, doing all this bullshit, controlling you, fucking up your self-esteem, you go right the fuck ahead, baby. Go right ahead. I've never met a black man who wasn't insecure. Me. It's not control. I mean, it's control. It is not love. I've been down that road. I'm telling you. And I thought it was love until I had to realize much later on I was being abused. A man that tries to control everything about you. This man tried to control everything down to what I ate, how I dressed. He tried to control everything that's about me. And guess what? I let him. That's how emotionally beat down I was at that time, at that space in my life. I'm telling oh, you, it's not love. What it is is that he doesn't want you to go anywhere. So any way he can control you, if you let him, he's gonna do it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to second that. Like honestly, speaking about cicadas in general, mammies and pygmies, they're they those men are opportunists. So please don't confuse it. Don't think like, oh, he's controlling me. Oh my God. He, I'm his possession. He cares about me. Cause you know, some sick ass bitches will really sit there and know that it's control and still feel like it's something positive because that, you know, but listen, they're opportunists. So yes, it is control, but it's because they want to be able to take advantage of you and suck you dry of your resources and everything that you can provide them, be it money, housing, um, any kind of opportunities that they might be able to get through you. It's not about, oh, you're so special that they feel like they need to control you and keep you under their thumb. It's about you are an item. You are a thing. You are not a person. You are an opportunity. You are you are something that is not human to them. They don't give a fuck about you at all. Don't you confuse it for one motherfucking second that that fucking bastard is controlling you because he cares about you even a little bit. He's an opportunist. No, they do not. DZ, DZ, that insecure attachment style, that basically led to the worst beating my mother ever got that, I, that I saw. Because Leah thinks that's cute. Tell Leah. Okay. <clears throat> my mother worked third shift. Uh, my parents, you know, we, they were, my, my parents were, I had two parent home for a while and uh my mother worked third shift and my father had gotten drunk from drinking like a half a, like a whole six pack of beer. He fell asleep on the couch and he was supposed to go pick her up. So my mother was stranded. So there was a white man who was on, who was like a foreman who saw her. And as my father got up, he was, oh my God. And so he goes pick up my mom and there was a white man there who would circle around to make sure my mama was okay. And my father saw him talk to my mother. Well, the motherfucker beat her in the car. He beat her in the car when they got into, <clears throat> got to the house. He beat her on the porch. He picked up a tree limb, hit her in the head, knocked open an artery, mm. blood's falling down her face. 
And she, they come in the house like this. I hear the porch light get broken. Here I am, this little kid. I hear this. I spring up. And the rest of my brothers and sisters sprung up. My mother walks into the house with blood all down her face. It was like out of carry. Blood all down her face, her coat. Okay. Like she had done something. That motherfucker fell asleep on her, insecure. She was talking to a man who was ready to take her home. That was the oh, worst beating know. she got in her life. I know Listen. about that too. I used to dread when a man would say something to me and he, and pray he did not see it. Oh my God. See, and that, that is that no was, way to live. <laughs> that and, and then these women, these mammies especially, think that shit is cute. Sometimes y'all, they think that when they get beat on, that's his expression of love. Girl, nobody that loves and care about you is going to hit you. They are fully aware that those blows hurt. When you love somebody, you don't want them hurt, idiot. You don't want them hurt. Is this Leah right here? No, no, Leah. Let me, let me see if this is Leah. Find me real a good quick. black man. I'd be damned if I let him go anywhere. I always said I'd never fight over a man, but you let me have a good black man and a bitch can't say shit to me because she will get ass kicked. Is that you, Leah? Is that you, boo? Because that's 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 the, the vibe I'm getting off you. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. No, no, please. This is this is your stream. Um you know, Leah, you may have to be able to be with yourself for a bit and accept the fact that you have an unhealthy attachment, an unhealthy uh relationship with attention. I mean, cause because I mean it's sad because if you are gonna conflate that with positive reinforcement and positive attention, it sounds like you are just in a position where you have not had attention. And this is, I've, I've experienced this too, not with black men, but I've experienced it too, is you get to, you, you are conflating what they're doing, this abuse with attention. They like it's attention, whether attention. it's positive or negative, just, you know, it has yeah. to come from a black man, but whether it's positive or negative, they look for the shit. Now, why y'all think there's so many black women over there hanging out in the manosphere? Why do you think they're over there? They don't, they know good and goddamn well, they're not going to get anything positive from over there. But the fact that his ass is black and he's up there talking, that's enough. The sound of his voice is melodic to her. Just, they'll type crazy shit in the comment section just so it can be addressed kind of like what happened here ain't that right leah mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i'm just gonna be honest with you i never knew how a woman was supposed to be treated until i stopped dating black men just to be honest with you because my first date with a non-black man i was so i didn't even know how to act i didn't even have to pull out my wallet and pay for anything i didn't that was foreign to me it's like damn See, I didn't know how a man was supposed to treat a woman until I started dating non-black men. That's just what it is. And mammies can get mad. Niggas can get mad. But the truth is just the truth. Your men, black men are the absolute worst men to try to date. And I said what the fuck I said. These are the worst, worst men to fuck with. They want to waste your time and play games and hopefully get some ass at the end of the night. That's what y'all they thinking of. And I'm not saying other groups of men don't want to fuck because they absolutely do. A man is a man. I don't care what color he is. But let's to be real, black men are nasty as fuck, and they yeah, rude the as fuck, and they and don't I, have no. Mm -hmm. And Aaliyah, what? You, uh, thank you for saying that because I have heard from black women out of their mouths. Well, what happened to so and so? You, 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 you like so and so? He was too nice. Uh, excuse me, DZ. It's not smoke night, right? No, it's not smoke night, but hell, uh, we can put set these tacos uh, on fire if you got to. Oh, well, I'm not well, going to well, have nobody sitting up there telling yeah. these women that being checked up on and being controlled and going getting your phone going through and you scared because some other dude spoke to you because he's going to beat your ass because he's too much of a coward to say, baby, you know, whatever. Listen, that shit is not healthy. And a lot of these black women's mothers did not teach them that that shit is not cute. It's not. It's toxic. Anyway, hmm. let's go. Okay, where is the smoke? Who got some smoke? Oh, there was this guy named D Mac in there that was calling us sick. That I just wanted to know if whether or not we should we should um should smoke him or just have the. I didn't um, see. Uh, I didn't see what the mammy kick. uh son said. What did the mammy son say? I don't even be seeing them, y'all. Oh well, he said. Let me see. Hold on. I I just happened to look in there, and he was like, "Y'all are some <laughs> sick women." 
Don't you get tired of complaining all the nights of blah, blah, blah. Basically, just, you know, the good old diversion tactic. Yeah, there was another pull person. That tampon out. It's pull that tampon out his ass and hit the link and come get this boy by ass. <laughs> there was another person I hope the mods got. I saw somebody called African American talking about why don't y'all get the female cops that are arresting our children or some dumb shit. I hope that motherfucker got blocked. Fuck you. <laughs> Listen, if the cops are arresting your children, it's probably because they need to be arrested. You know, if your kids aren't doing anything, usually the cops don't fuck with them. How about that part? But Again, on the screen, accountable. You're not accountable. Your your men and neither that whole community is not accountable. Every time a cop speaks to you, it's not because you're black. It's because you're doing something that's against that particular business's rules, i.e., putting shit in a bag before you pay for it, right? Listening to your fucking music on speaker in the store. Just bullshit. Bringing your bike in there. So because you're black, <laughs> nobody's supposed to say anything to you. They can't tell you what the rules of the establishment is. And you know, good and goddamn well, y'all children be taking shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all be having to do a pocket check when your nieces and nephews leave that fucking house because they're going to steal your kids toys in their little pockets because they learned that from their goddamn community. If you want mm -hmm. something, you got to take it. Okay. Well, y'all look. The youngest Hashtag. school shooter was six <laughs> years old, and I'm not talking about the one that just happened, okay? The youngest school shooter was six, and this is before this most recent situation. Y'all remember that little boy wanted a kiss from that little white girl, and she didn't do it. He came back and shot her? Mm -hmm. Y'all kids are not angels. Fuck out of here. So accountability. That's not something that's able to be gone, uh, gotten from the black community. It's not. Everything is somebody else's fault. Everything that happens to them is somebody else's fault, whether it's graduation, whether them getting kicked out of prom, right? Because their parents don't have a bunch of money. They, the parents tell them, well, mommy can't buy you this because, you know, the, these jobs is racist and they don't pay enough and blah, blah, fucking blah. Look, the moment y'all ever decide to take accountability, then you might get somewhere. But that's never going to happen, so I might as well shut my dick liquor. Because you never take accountability for nothing. Black women don't take accountability for how these niggas keep running through them. They run through you. You are a foregone conclusion, ma'am. That's why they start swinging on your ass when you don't pay them no attention. Because you are a foregone conclusion. And you surprise them when you don't give them attention. What? Uh, mm. Accountability is responsibility. <laughs> they don't know how to... They don't. You you can't be you can't step into accountability without being willing to take responsibility for your own existence. And this is stuff I teach people. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really hard for people to be willing to accept that they were actually wrong and be able to learn from that. They don't know how to do that. They can't. I, I honestly think and I'm I'm I may be high what do they call it? High, hyperbolic. I honestly believe that if that were to actually happen, if a black male were to actually attempt accountability, he might actually like physically have you ever seen what was those things? The gremlins when like you would it was sunlight, they would like actually like explode. I think that would basically be what happened. It would just his brain and his ego would not know what to do you with that. You ain't gotta never worry about seeing no <laughs> shit like that because there is a zero percent chance of black males taking accountability for what has happened to their community. Um, traditionally, the community was men's responsibility to protect, provide, and problem solve. Being that they dropped the ball, now everybody's at fault. The white man, black women, whatever. But the thing is, you don't have to worry about that. That's the last thing you got to worry about. You got to worry about a huge rainstorm and flooding in a desert before you worry about a black man taking accountability for any fucking thing. I mean, nothing is ever their fault. Nothing. They don't never. They don't do anything wrong. They are perfect. Let them tell it. And then it's like they. It's like you cannot hold them accountable for anything when nothing is ever their fault. It's like how can you win that situation or that argument? Nothing. I'm telling you, nothing. Everything is gonna be your fault because every. Of course, everything is the black woman's fault. Nothing is ever their. fault. Fault. That's why I don't even waste my time trying to talk to him. I cannot. You cannot. It's impossible. Financially stable. <laughs> <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? 
Them is some of the brokest motherfuckers on earth. Do you hear me? And again, that's not their fault, remember? Listen, do not let any man make you feel bad for wanting to have financial stability. It's the adult, grown, and responsible thing to do is be financially stable and responsible. Does shit happen? Absolutely. But with niggas, it's their permanent situation. Something's always happening. OK, you're budgeting for things you shouldn't have to be budgeting for. You should automatically assume that you can get these expensive ass eggs. Did you hear me? <laughs> uh, uh, did you hear Not me? <laughs> you should automatically assume that you can get that ten dollar dozen of eggs. Why? Because you're giving away all that pussy. If you can't give me two eggs with cheese scrambled and some toast, how dare you think you're getting ready to stick that in me? Are you out of your fucking mind? Y'all over here bitching about the price of eggs. It's called inflation, and it happens from time to time, and you're tripping, boo. I just, uh, before I came on here, I swear on the Bible and four fat folks. On WSB TV, they was talking about hoarding pampers because these women cannot afford pampers because of inflation. That translates to me, you need to stop having babies. If you can't afford pampers, you can't afford that child. Do you hear me? That's why bitches be all child. Every child is a blessing and blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. If you cannot stop them from pissing and shitting on themselves, you can't afford that fucking child. They doing a whole goddamn warehouse of different size pampers in the state of Georgia. So these bum bitches can come and get pampers for their child. Cause you know, good and well, Tyrone is not bringing it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Something else that they're not, which goes back to what Ebony was saying earlier about them grooming black women to be cheap. They don't want you to want anything, to ask for anything, to require anything because they know they can't meet those financial needs. They're not financially stable. That's why they complain about having to take women out and pay for dates. They complain about everything that has something to do with money and if you even bring it up or mention it, you're a prostitute, you're money hungry, you're a gold digger, even though I can't imagine where the gold is that you would be digging for. They don't have any gold for you to get but the thing is, that's why they don't they're not financially stable but that's why it's a problem. Everything is a problem. They want to go 50-50. They can't even afford to pay the rent in full. That's the problem. They can't afford to buy the groceries. They can't afford to put the utility, pay for the utility bills in the house. But my thing is, they think they are entitled to women in their full submission. Some of the most ugliest, brokest men on the planet. And to be honest with you, a lot of black women are to blame for this delusion that they have. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I wanted to say too. Um, I was watching 90 Day Fiance, and there's a so called nigger corn on nigger corn unicorn oh. on there. Sorry, and um, nigger corn, and he looks like a beaver, but anyway, um, he was on the reunion with his black woman wife, and he said that they said that when they go to the movies, that she can't even order anything from the concession stand or whatever it's called at the movie theater. They have to sneak shit in and buy stuff before. I was like, oh my God, what kind of dusty, broke ass shit is this? Are you kidding me? You can't you can't buy something at the movies? Like that's how y'all living out here with these guys? Like, come on. Well, come I mean, Snapple. On. Snapple, I found out today that I had more money than Usain Bolt. So <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I found that out today. Are you serious? <laughs> They don't even know. They are so financially illiterate. It's scary. Y'all, that show 30 for 30 that come on ESPN, I originally thought that it was about niggas going broke. I swear to you. It was always some has been washed up ass motherfucker that played professional whatever. And he's sitting there talking about, well, my accountant wasn't paying the taxes. And um, yeah, we, we kind of living on a budget. Look, you can give a nigga $30 million today. Okay. He's not going to have that thirty million in two thousand thirty. He's but, not. But you want to know the sickest thing about them being financially unstable? They can't do anything for you. They complain about every little thing. Your hair costs too much. You y'all have maintenance. You need your weaves done. You need your nails and your toes done. You want to go to the spa. You want to get massages. You want to be pampered. And my thing is, they complain about every single fucking thing when it comes to having to take care of a woman. Oh, but baby, when it comes to them, when it comes to them sneakers, they no expense. It doesn't matter how much them fucking sneakers cost. They'll pay two hundred off for them ugly ass sneakers, baby. Do just same thing when it comes to them rims for them fucking cars. Anything that them cars need, 
Any, any kind of jewelry they want to buy, material bullshit that lose value as soon as they buy it, they don't mean shit. That's mm -hmm. what they will sink all of their money into. But they don't think that you're worthy enough to invest in. But they'll, they'll throw their money away in all that bullshit that don't mean shit. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. They let them do it too. You know, there's if you're looking for financial stability, you're going to have to divest. Hell, you'll do better by yourself because even if you did sit up and marry a nigga, you are taking more risk because you're usually the breadwinner. And if he does have a job, you make more than him. So, baby, you are going to be the one paying alimony. That's how black marriages work nine times out of ten. Socially viable. What is that? Well, being that black men are on the low end of the totem pole, you get judged whenever you take one of these motherfuckers around somebody you're trying to impress. An employer, a mortgage broker, the bank, that type of shit. Because black men have the stereotypes that they have, and they're true, by the way, people look at you sideways and it holds you back when you're trying to move up in the world. When somebody's thinking about giving you a promotion, an apartment, or whatever it is you're looking for. When they see you with that thing next to you, they take pause. They take pause. They're not socially viable. Another thing. Usually, they have criminal records. So you can't get a lot of shit with them either. Passports, right? There's a lot of apartment complexes that won't let motherfuckers move in if they have felonies and that type of shit. Black men are not socially viable. So if you want to, number one, keep getting your ass handed to you, and number two, not be able to move up in the world, then you keep playing around with this black love shit. Keep it up. Anybody got anything on that? Of course they're not socially viable. They show their asses everywhere they go. I mean, thank God. I know I'm country, but at least I didn't stay dumb forever. Because think about it, and I know the ladies can relate. Even if a man is attractive, we know that what comes out of his mouth has the ability to change all of that. Because as soon as you see how stupid or shallow he is, he becomes very ugly in that moment. And with the way some of these things talk, with the way they act, with the way they show their ass, is in public because you imagine having to show up with that to your office party and not be completely fucking embarrassed before the night is over the same mm -hmm. thing with arrogance there's a difference between arrogance and confidence confidence is sexy being arrogant and stuck on yourself is not and most black men think they are god's gift to women no matter how ugly and fat and funky looking that they are i'm telling you socially viable I would take these motherfuckers nowhere to do nothing with me. It's embarrassing. It is. Um, the whole Cassie, room changes. Cassie, I'm making sure that's your real account. Is that you, Cassie? It's me. Hey, Dizzy. Hey, y'all. Hey, give me one second. Mm -hmm. United okay. States. Are you dusty? United States, are you dusty? All right, I'm going to remove you, okay? I seen you came in and then you left. So I guess you lost the uh are are you there? Yeah, you can't hear me. It sounds oh, oh my god. god, what the I fuck? Think, I think that's oh, good. Are you able to hear me? it sounds horrible, whatever it is. So I'm I'm gonna have to get you from up here. I can't even tell whether that's a man, woman, alien, whatever. You can't hear me. Oh my god. By United States, I couldn't hear nothing it was saying. I don't know I don't even know what it was, to be honest with you. All right, Cassie, what you got on this? So socially viable, that reminds me of a situation that happened when I first got into like the corporate world. And one of my then colleagues, she, you know, she was fired a, a little while after that, invited her, not husband, what they call it when y'all together for like 10 years, but they say through the courts, you guys have that union ship. Common law? Yes, common law. law. Yeah, she invited her common law husband. And when I have never been so embarrassed for somebody else before. It was terrible. He could not pronunciate any of his words. He came completely undressed for the occasion. I'm talking about jeans and mm. like you know those those old school silk shirts. It was a oh, silk no. shirt, but it looks it looked like he was sweating. Hush. It looked like he was sweating through the shirt, y'all. Sweating through the shirt no hair because he just looks so bad and she's walking around introducing him to her the vps and the svps of the company and they looked more they looked mortified and i had never been so embarrassed for someone before but i just didn't know how she couldn't you know but she couldn't read the room for him but yeah they can't read the room they can't read anything 
you know. So, like I was saying, you you keep it up. Um, if you're ready for that struggle, keep doing what you're doing. Keep believing in these women that keep telling you that black love is a thing. Okay, I've seen these black love channels. Some of them can't afford a fucking computer. The man can't get this. He can't get that. I don't know why you would want a part of something like that. How dare you tell these women to go get what you got and it's a struggle fest. He's cheap. He's this. He's that. And sometimes you can tell when motherfuckers ain't getting along because every now and then if he's usually there when she's doing a live and all of a sudden he ain't there, boo, something's going on. These black couples argue all the goddamn time and it gets kind of violent. Motherfuckers busting windows out of cars, flattening tires, keying up vehicles, beating each other ass. If you want a piece of that just to be able to say that you found black love, then you go right ahead. I just wanted to put that out there real quick. Moving right along. This was shared with me. And ladies, it, it, it's, it's black love yet again. Okay? It's black love yet again. This woman here, she was at a function and there was a guy there that uh, she knew. So it goes like this. I have spent weeks blaming myself, feeling ashamed and trying to convince myself what happened wasn't our word. OK, but I'll die before I let him get away with this. On 9 to 12, 22, I was sexually. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right. And our word while intoxicated by Billy Isaac Mazoya. And this is him. These are the type of people that you sitting up wishing you can get. You're hoping to find a kind one like this or somebody that's just remote. You just want black. You got to ask yourself why that's your, your preference, number one, because we just went through a whole bunch of a whole goddamn list about the things that they aren't. Now that you know that and you have no rebuttal for that, to be honest with you, why do you want that? Is there something going on with you? Is there something that you're not getting? Are you a self-sabotager? Hmm. But one of his comments, it made me, it made me, made me take pause because they're telling you straight up and down who the fuck they are. Okay. They're sitting here going back and forth about what actually happened and what didn't happen. <sighs> and he says to her, Cammy, this is all too much. I did not R word you. And I do not want you going through this whole ordeal again. We both know police don't do anything when it comes to actual assault situations and our word accusations, etc., especially for black women. Paul. Wow. I wow. felt like he was gonna, he could do that and get away with it. God damn. You're still playing games with these people, these nakers, these whatever you want to call it. They're always telling you about how oppressed you are. They are, excuse me. And they know that you go through things sometimes. They know that women go through shit when they accuse somebody of doing something to them. They know that the, the onus and, you know, the proof, it lies with the woman. He knows that. And this is why they keep doing this type of shit. My question is, why are you drinking with these type of people? Y'all know good and goddamn well that black males have an issue when it comes to their genitals. They do. They don't wash it and they think everybody's supposed to suck it. That's just the bottom line. But you still out here caping and capping for these niggas. And he's the not lying to be honest with you. It, it, I mean, the mammies have pretty much made them a protected class. I mean, nobody could say anything to them or attempt to do anything without them crying racism every five minutes or, you know, and people being sued for everything and they having to pay out these people millions of dollars every time they offend one of these motherfuckers. I mean, he's not lying, but it's sad that this is how bold that they have gotten it. They can tell you this to your face. Well, I can do this. I can do whatever I want to do to you and they ain't going to do a damn thing to me about it because you're a black woman. So they already know this. Mm -hmm. And you already know that black males don't protect black women. So he could do that shit in front of some black males if you want to keep it all the way real. You know. Before and I get... Go ahead, it, Bo. It, it speaks to the evil because I already know he, he didn't have to do that. Like, he, there's plenty of Pikmishas that would have just handed the 
the kitty cat over to him with no problem but they don't want when you just throwing it at them like that they want what they can't have what they what they're not entitled to and they will do that they will go to these parties or these functions and they will literally do that and take it from somebody that they're not supposed to take it from and then he had the audacity to sit there and text her trying to act like he can i don't want you going through this again but you know you know they won't care because you're a black woman like trying to gaslight and manipulate her that shit was disgusting that that is an evil ass piece of shit and you know if this story is on social media at all i already know there's a line of mammies dragging the fuck out of her mm-hmm. and exactly. this time. That's why I said they, they have made it like that. If this nigga so much as chips and nail and he says it's your fault, they're going to attack you, the entire community, women included. And they know this. As a matter of fact, the bitches is going to go out first. That's who's going to be on the front line, the, the bitches, their pit bulls, them guard dogs. If they you so much as say chip that nigga's nail, they gonna be there to take your ass and you gonna be everything beside what your God given name was. You gonna you, you, know, have, you, you a hoe anyway. You was already fucking everybody. Stop lying. You just trying to bring a good black man down and every damn thing else. And they they're gonna try to pretend like they dumb, like they don't know what we're talking about. But that's exactly how y'all bitches treat other black women. Don't play these fucking games. At this point, a self defense charge is a better bet. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm just saying, like, what is it? What is it, DZ? You know, somebody say, you say, I'd rather be, what is it, judged by 12, judged by 12 than buried by six or something like that. I forget the saying, but it's <laughs> like, at this point, it's like, I mean, I'm just saying, if, if he is going to talk like this and I am going to say that he is speaking for how they all think. At this point, it's like you need to look, get that, get that self defense, and (laughs) just get that self defense and keep it moving. You're still here. Like at the end of the day. It's like the whole Shanquella situation. Like, we don't even know the whole story. Like, she could have been there with friends. They could have left her. We have no idea. That's why, I honestly, like, I need to divest from everybody the friends, the mammies, the family members, the parties. Stop going around the motherfucking Blackistan hubs and drinking and smoking and doing all that stuff. It's very unsafe in a sober situation it's definitely unsafe if you're going to get intoxicated in any way die why were you there they love that why were you there come on you wanted it you asked for it and Mm -hmm. all this other shit you can i'm telling you as a woman as a black woman you can never do anything right and if you're looking to this community for any type of support you might as well keep looking because y'all aren't going to get it no no support no empathy no sympathy and nothing else they don't give a damn as far as they're concerned i mean what there's nothing you can accuse a black man of at this point that these people are going to give a damn about and it's sad that they even they know that at this point so now they're t- just telling you straight out I'm going to do what the fuck I want and there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it yeah that's where we at with it right now and that makes the situation a hell of a lot more dangerous when motherfuckers know that they're going to go home after because you made sure that they can go home right mammies because you fought for the bail reform so he can knock you the fuck out knock all your chick- chicklets out right and then he get out on his own recognizance all right let's look at some black love while we at it Let's go. A family is grappling with an unimaginable tragedy tonight. A pregnant mother shot and killed just days before she was due to deliver a baby boy. Right now, that newborn is clinging to life. WCCO's David Schumann spoke with the victim's mother, now pleading for prayers to help her grandson survive. The grief of losing her daughter is nearly crushing Katina O'Neill. The death of her newborn grandson would be too much to bear. I need him to pour through this. I... Ladies of all ages, whether you're nine or 99, you have to start being honest about what's going on in the black community. You have to. I've seen so many fucking tears. So many, oh, I wish this, that, and the third. Oh, my baby. Oh, it's just, but you keep going back. You keep going back. And the one that gets me is we deserve to have mates too. Absolutely. You don't deserve a nigga. Unless you crazy as fuck. This woman and lost her child. Why? Because, you know, she didn't tell her. Uh, baby girl, that ain't it. You got to tell them that ain't it. Even if they decide to go there, you still have to tell them that ain't it. Then your job is done. 
tell her why, and then let her live her grown ass life. But you got to start telling them what's happening. She raised this girl. She had this girl, loved this girl, but wasn't, I don't know, equipped maybe to let her know, look, her father's not here. He's not in the clip. And then you're doing this again. You keep doing it over and over and over. Each generation is sitting there crying and you're fighting with divestors. Let's go. I want him to. I can't lose both of them. Not right now. No. Police say Kyla O'Neill was shot Sunday in the parking lot of the Amazon warehouse in Lakeville three days before her due date. Kyla died at the hospital, but doctors successfully delivered her son named Messiah. He lost a lot of oxygen to the brain, so therefore he have no brain functioning right now. I'm holding on to faith. I'm praying. You know, God got the last word. And so um, hopefully God is leaving y'all on red. Dealing with them, you're going to get left on red. I don't know whether he sees the message or not, but he's not answering. He hasn't answered you since day one. Praying over these niggas is not going to change them. Why are you so determined to do this? Are Why? you going to tell her, or shall I? <laughs> Go ahead. Are you going to tell, are you gonna tell or you want me to tell her? You tell her. <laughs> she said that. Did she say the grandbaby does not have any brain function right now? Mm. I'm sorry, baby. Pull that plug. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not. He's not coming back. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not working. They're delusional. If you love your grandbaby, right, you would have been pulled that plug. You wouldn't want your grandchild living on this earth in the condition that he'd be in if you don't. They're delusional about everything. Sitting up praying is not magic dust. It does not work like that. You have to be proactive and protect yourself from this nonsense, y'all. And why the fuck was she still working or being at that Amazon parking lot doing whatever the fuck she was doing three days before her delivery date? This is y'all's lives. Yeah, no brain function. He's not coming back. That's, I'm sorry. And it's probably due to all the blood she lost when he shot her. Yeah, he That's went in oxy. And I hate to say it, but what kind of life is that for a child? Even if he wasn't brain dead and he was, you know, to live and he was he made it out unscathed. What kind of life is that for a child to live knowing that their mother's dead and their father is one who pulled that trigger? You think he's not going to grow up and do the same thing his father did and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat? Absolutely. He's going to be all the way fucked up. The grandmother, even if he was perfectly functioning fine and he grew up into adulthood. He's going to use this situation as a reason to be able to be a jackass out here. They they do it all the time. You Not got to people mention in 2023 still using slavery as to why they act stupid as fuck. Right. And the trauma, Daisy. I mean, when she got shot, that her body went through trauma. If she is carrying that 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 child within her, that child is being flooded with trauma, flooded with cortisol. I'm just saying, like that. That that's not even fair to this this in this being at this point, because they, they didn't even get to come in right. But <laughs> it's just oh jeez, he's right. Let's go. Hopefully, he give him to me. Messiah and his three siblings are now without a mother, who family says was driven, outspoken, and good at whatever she put her mind to. All she ever thought about doing was making making the life for her and her kids. She's looking forward to this birth. Police say Kyla's fiance, the father of newborn Messiah and another daughter, was with her when officers responded to the 911 call. He's been interviewed. He's been cooperating with us. Um, he is in custody right now at the Dakota County Jail and being held on second degree manslaughter charges. Kyla's mother says Kyla ended the relationship hours before she died. She didn't deserve what, what happened to her. She had a promising future. To her pain. It's even harder when I look at her babies. David Schumann, WCCO 4 News. Now, ladies, did y'all hear the charge? He fucked up two people, killed one. The other one is, is not functioning, brain functioning gone. He's not being charged with murder. No, no. Mammy's got the reform that they were looking for, and he's only being charged with manslaughter. Did you hear what I said? OK, it is no coincidence that she just broke up with him and now she's no longer here. But this is the type of shit that they are pushing. OK, black men have made no no goddamn secret about how they don't like black women, especially black women that look like her.
Okay. She, I'm no, sorry. She, I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say her mother need her ass beat because ain't no way that she got these many children. It, it, it happens. I'm not saying something wrong with her having a lot of children. But what I'm saying is, is I'm pretty sure whoever the other children's fathers were wasn't really around much neither because you haven't heard anybody else, any other male or man in her life come up and speak for her. It's just her mother sitting there. And I'm getting tired of seeing the parents or the sisters or the aunts of these women who were being killed come up crying. Where were you at during this whole process of them being in this relationship? Y'all, if they tried this um, with anything else, if they were trying to make a, a, a touch-free cell phone that just did some old special shit or whatever, if they kept doing this over and over and it didn't work, at some point that, that has to be, the plan has to be scratched. Now, this right here is what y'all doing with these relationships. There are none that are going to think that you're special. They don't think that you're special at all. You are a placeholder. You are an inconvenience. And sometimes a convenience the following week. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Depending on whatever that nigga needs at the moment, that's what you're going to be. Once you stop serving that function, you are done. There are no men in this goddamn um, clip at all. Her father's gone. The baby father's headed to jail. I don't know who homegirl was to the right of her that was holding the other baby. Listen, it doesn't work. So when people come for us and talk about how we don't talk about the crime in other communities, we actually do. We actually do. But it's happening more in your community, jackass. It's always <laughs> happening in your community every four hours to be exact. Go ahead. The thing is, we have no obligation to talk about what's going on in these other communities. We are black women. We're not white women. White right. women have always had the platforms to be able to discuss whatever grievances they had with their men. That's for them to work that out with their men. We're not a part of that community. We're not from that community. Most of us did grow up in the black community. We have eventually divested for various reasons now. But a lot of us were born into these families. These are our experiences that we are talking about. we don't, It's not going to do us any good to get, jump up here and talk about what's going on in these other communities. How does that help us to heal or get over our trauma or to help the next generation that's coming after us to make better or smarter decisions, not make the same mistakes that we made? Constantly talking about what other races of people do does not help us any. That has Absolutely. nothing to do with us. Absolutely. That has nothing you can flip the shit too. Why y'all don't ever talk about what goes on in your community? If it's up to women to talk about both communities or all communities, why the fuck don't you ever point out what that nigga do? According to you, he's God. Y'all, some of y'all even call him God. Okay, be looking crazy as hell. They, they're the closest thing to God. Well, I don't want shit to do with God if that's the case. Okay, let me see if, um, let me put my banner up and see if holistic is, is real or no. Holistic, are you dusty? No, ma'am. Hey, DZ. Hey, ladies. What's up? Hey, how are you? Good. I just wanted to contribute to the topic. Um, first off, it's just this story you're covering right now. I feel like there's just no opportunity for them to course correct at any point because, like, when I see this lady, like, she reminds me of my half sisters, and my half sisters are like ratchet as fuck, but I'm East African, and like, our lives are so different. But like, she be doing shit like this all the time, where it's like you know, you're in a horrible relationship. And then, you know, you can't give them advice is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, you have to get the fuck away from them. You yeah. have to get away from them. They're not, if they on some bullshit where they have to have a black man, you better get that bitch out of your life. Okay. Oh no, they're gone. I'm divested for real. No, I'm, we haven't talked in years, but it's just like, I'd be hearing shit. It's like, she in jail for fighting him again, girl. And like, it's a bunch of shit, but it's just like, it's like if he, if we, because we have love in our hearts as black women for even the, the dusty ass mammies, like, but you can't say shit to them because you a raggedy ass bitch. You say something, you get cussed the fuck out. And it's just like, all right, girl, do you. But um, also, I wanted to say one more thing. Um, The story before this, my high school, my, my college friend, she that happened to her where she was just drinking and so she got essayed. Um, it, it was her college graduation party. And I was there, and I, it was just crazy. I tried to help her and tell her, like, don't fuck around with these guys. We you don't know. You take your wrong. cape off. You you, the, both stories, you said that you was trying to school and help. Girls, y'all yeah. no, leave these like motherfuckers alone, please. Yeah. Leave them alone. No, that was my mammy days. Like, that's when I was still in Blackistan, when I, like, had, like, 
my black girlfriends and was with my like sisters and all that but now it's just like you can't help them course correct it's kind of just like fuck them like you can't do nothing for them because it's just at the end of the day it's just it's not going to be helpful either way well thank you but for yeah. coming up i agree with you 100 percent. there's nothing you can do they're gonna be caping and capping how about that part we put this I'm, up here I'm gonna say something really quick uh, um sure I was going to say really quick to help point because I'm seeing conflicting messages in the chat. Like some people are saying, oh, you can't blame the family. And the others are saying, you know, like you kind of want to be there if they need you X, Y, Z. Long time ago when I first called up and I told you about that friend I had when I was a teenager who got that plate in her eye. Let's let's talk about what the fuck's going on in this chat. Let's let's just keep it real. Sorry yes. to cut you off about that, that woman with the plate in her eye. Mm -hmm. Listen. If you are raised by a black woman and she didn't tell you that niggas ain't shit, she fucked up. Pull up. That fucking link is in the chat. If she didn't tell you that niggas wasn't shit, she fucked up. She did. Get over it. They want to talk about all we talk about is black men. By the same token, I want to turn around and ask them the same question. Why the fuck is all y'all want to talk about is white men? Why the fuck y'all keep doing that? Mm -hmm. it, 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 some, it, let me know that because y'all don't date them, y'all don't fuck them, y'all don't, y'all are not married to them. So why is that all you want to talk about? Exactly. I, I think we reserve the right to ask them the same question. And, mm. like, let's not pretend, like, a huge part of divestment is self-preservation and putting yourself first. And I'll actually say, I was sitting here feeling for this woman on the screen. I felt like she was beautiful. And, you know, you never know. Maybe she even watched one of DZ's lives, and maybe that's why she broke up with him. You never know. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm going to throw myself in front of her and take what she was about to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, there's nothing wrong with putting yourself first and being like, no. I'm not going to put myself in these situations. That doesn't make you a bad friend or that you don't have morals or integrity. You have to take care of you. If you don't take care of you, who's going to do it? And that's, that's yeah. what it's all about. And as Black women, we've been conditioned and raised, most of us, in Blackistan to put everybody else first. So even in this damn chat where we have the conflicted messages, I can see why. Because it's like, oh, no. So many of us are still conflicted because we're like, no, wait, no, you're supposed to be there for your friends. You're supposed to do this. No, put yourself first. You come this first. To be, to be honest, this is the reason why I don't even bother reading the chat while I'm up here. I may go back and read a few things during the playback, but while I'm up on this panel, I don't even focus on the chat. I don't even want to know what anybody's saying because I already know it's too many trolls to even take that shit seriously. You got too many people over here that's on this channel that's not supposed to be in here. You got motherfuckers that's, on, that's supposed to be up in the clouds that won't stay in the clouds because they behind all kind of fake and burner accounts and all kind of shit just to cause conflict and chaos and all mm -hmm. kind of shit. That's the reason why I don't even respond to the chat unless DZ put something up on the screen or something that I can physically read that's right in front of me. Other than that, I don't follow the chat because I know what shit starts down there and it's a lot of motherfuckers from the manosphere and black men that's actually hiding behind fake accounts with black, using black women photographs and shit like that. That's the reason why I know they here to start shit because I'm going to say what I'm going to say and I mean every fucking word that I've ever said. So it don't matter. They can type whatever the fuck they want to type. Anything that was said up here was motherfucking me. And what? By, what the, way, by the way, ladies, mm -hmm. everybody that's listening right now, the reason that she broke up with him is because he had just had a newborn. I told you that niggas with jobs, right? They have a two mm -hmm. pussy minimum. Even the ones without jobs think there's a two pussy minimum. She's sitting up here big, swollen, pregnant. And somebody else gave birth the other day before she died, right, to her fiance's baby. Okay, this is what y'all doing. Okay, I don't understand being surprised. I really don't. You, as a black woman, would never be enough for them. Even some of these famous Hollywood fucking actresses that happen to be black women, they getting cheat the fuck on. Okay. It is what it is. I know that shit is heartbreaking to a lot of you that want black men, but it doesn't matter who you are, Erica Badu, Jill Scott, or the homeless bitch down the street named Sheila. You're not going to satisfy a black man, and they've told you this. Okay? I have a couple things um, I'd like to say on this topic, though. My first thing is, 
for the people out there who are of the opinion of wanting to help other people, and I say this as someone who, who enjoys helping others, in order to help other people, you have to be here. Like you can't help people if there is no you, right? So first, you need to be able to master yourself. Master your decisions, master your thoughts, master your actions. If you are not walking within your own integrity and moving in a way that is beneficial for you, you are not of much use to other people because there's only but so much you can say after a while. If your actions are not congruent with what you do, you are basically, you're false. You're not, you're not really doing anything for anybody. So I, I'm all for the, you know, be here for each other and all that great stuff. But until you are, like I said, until you master yourself, you really can't can't do anything for anybody else. And this is why, as these ladies have said up here, you 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 can't. Let me let me let me, cut you, let, let me let, let me cut you off real quick. Check this out. If the bitch is on some bullshit, fuck her. I'm just gonna. You could be the type of person that want to help people. I'm into helping divested women. I will drag the shit out of a fucking mammy. I'm not getting ready to go above and beyond for some bitch that's always around some nigga, caping for some nigga, acting a damn fool, and they're the most desired and all this extra shit. There's nothing you can do for her. Let the bitch flop. I mean, Snap already said it best. We don't have to be on one accord with mammies, and we're never going to be on one accord mm -hmm. with mammies. Fuck the hell. See, this is what I'm talking about. You can only help people who want to help themselves. They have to want to help it. If you if your goal is to try to pull me that right back down with you, I'm sorry, I ain't going. I ain't going. I fall too hard to get away from a lot of bullshit to let somebody else take me back there. No ma'am. Divested and free. Are you dusty? Divested and free. Are you dusty? Going once, going twice. Oh, let me remove you because your goddamn camera came on. I don't want nobody to be able to see you, boo. Okay, that's what's up. Let me get my banner from up off of here. I love my banner. Okay. <laughs> I love, I love banner. it too. It's all those beautiful shades of black women, you know, no specific favorites, just, mm -hmm. you know, all black women welcome. I love it. And, and to Leah's point really quick, that's why I said what I said earlier about that old plate story, because some people are conflicted with whether you want to be there for them or not be there for them, whether you want to support someone who's been hurt or not support someone who's been hurt. My point was, and I think I'm not sure if Aaliyah said this, I'm not sure who said this earlier, but someone said, you know, you have to you have to take care of yourself first, you have to put yourself first. That's my point, because a lot of people, especially black women, we, they have a habit of putting everyone before them. And then when they finally want to come to their senses, they find that they find out that it's too late. I'm relatively sure that there's been multiple instances, not just with this baby father, but the other ones that she's found herself in the same situation. I could just be, I could just be, you know, being judgmental here, but I've seen it in the people in my life when I was younger, before I cut everybody off. And the girl with the plate in her eye got a plate in her eye at 16. And guess what she was doing at 17, 18? Popping out babies with a new man who was being her ass then. You know, it just kept repeating. So after a certain point, it's either you're going to help them or you're going to go about your business. But I'm you don't be on the fence with it. Pick a side. It's not it. about being judgmental. It's about you do have to put your safety first when it comes to situations mm -hmm. like this. You can try to help people all you want, but if they don't want it for themselves, I told this story about my own sister before in the past. You have sometimes you just have to let people learn that lesson and get the fuck out of the way because all they're doing is bringing that drama and that bullshit that they're doing. They bringing that shit to your front door. They putting your life in danger. Every time you got to intervene or put up with that shit, I had to tell my sister, you know that your husband does not like me, okay? So every time you call me because some bullshit is going on, I got to put myself in danger to come get you. And I'm not going to keep doing that. You're not going to get me killed. I tell you what, y'all want to play these fucking games with each other, y'all play these games. You give me my nieces and my nephew. That's what I need you to do because they are kids. They 
don't ask for this shit. Y'all grown. If this what y'all want to do, that's on y'all. You will not put them in the middle of this bullshit. Now I tell you what, you give me my, you give me the kids, and y'all kill each other. That's on y'all because I had got so tired of that bullshit. And guess what? I was I, when she got to the point where she wanted to use those kids against me. I had to detach myself from the situation completely because you're not about to use them against me either because you know those kids are my heart. So you think you're gonna keep using them to get to me? I think not. So I stopped answering my phone completely. And that was my own sister that I did that to because she had to learn. I'm not going to keep doing this because I'm having to keep jumping up, leaving work early, jumping in my car. Every time some bullshit pop off with y'all, come across town, you put me in all kinds of danger. Your husband don't even like me. Y'all, he can lay a trap for me. I don't even know what the fuck I'm walking into when I'm coming over there trying to save you. I'm not about to keep doing it. Yeah, DZ oh has showed God. so many stories already of people, moms, aunts, friends Get who have just up. gotten, exactly. yeah, just just by association. So absolutely, it's like you. I mean, it's beyond crabs in a barrel. Like you definitely have to distance yourself from any mammy pickmisha that has a kang. You know, even if they're so called unicorn, mm -hmm. you you never know when that ape gene activates. You know, just exactly. listen. And if you're not going to disconnect yourself from them, if you find yourself in the crossfires, that's on you. That's my point. That is on you. Because you. it's been too many red flags. Like Aaliyah's example. She saw so many red flags where she was like, I got to go. And it's like, if something would have happened to her, if she stuck around, she would have had to eat that on her own and say, you know what? I put myself in a situation because I saw it coming. A lot of black women, they see it coming and they, oh, that's my, that's my sister. That's my best friend. That's my aunt. That girl, you got to go. Y'all, this week, somebody sent me a clip. Okay. Let me pull this up. I'm going to just yell fair use on this. Listen, this is the deal. Black men are the weakest link. I think it's established. And I'll establish that shit again on Friday. But check it out. You have to do some work on yourself if you think or still desire one of these so-called unicorns, one of these so-called educated lames, one of these thugs, one of these niggas just out here trying to get it, whatever. It runs the gambit. You're going to end up like one of these women up on this screen. And at, at bare minimum, you're going to get cheated on, lied to. It, it usually does just not work out. It just is what it is. But I saw this clip and I thought it was fucking hilarious. Let me go with fair use real quick. Let's go. They always checking them, y'all. Always checking them. When women needed men, families worked out. As soon as women didn't need men, now all of a sudden families don't work out. To try to circle that back and try to pin that on men for not being nicer or not doing more or not going above and beyond to be an above average man for this average chick, you're telling men basically get out there, tap dance in the top hat and, and be excellent for these chicks. You know, it's yeah, like, what you're yeah, saying is be know. excellent or pull up or like go above and beyond. I would view as like bare standards for being a decent human being. If your only way of getting a girl ever was Ooh, like relying exactly. on the fact that she couldn't Real work, quick. that means you're a weak man. That means that you just don't I offer know. anything. You, you you're you're nothing. Like you're just a body that shows up at a factory, puts something together, and then goes home and thinks that that's enough to like land you some sort of relationship. And in the past it was, <laughs> but I think it's a little bit sad that our standards would, would revert to that and that we think it should go back to that. Like, oh God, like this woman can work a, a job and now the fact that my paycheck isn't enough to win me a wife means that I'm completely and totally lost and hopeless, I think it's time to like step up and like be an actual decent person, like figure out how to be uh, emotionally available in a relationship, figure out how to be a good partner, figure out how to make a woman date you other than the fact that like society says she's not allowed to work a job and get a paycheck. Oops. Mic drop. I'm sorry. Uh. If you're bored, you're bored. But I would like to run that back. Listen, these motherfuckers, whenever he's in the room with a white man with purple fucking hair and still lost, do you understand me? They are trash. Let's do that one more time. Bare minimum is what stuck out to me. Bare minimum. And half you fucking mammies ain't getting that. Oh, shit. More than half. Let's go. When women needed men, families worked out. As soon as women didn't need men, now all of a sudden families don't work out. To try to circle that back and try to pin that on men for not being nicer or not doing more or not going above and beyond to be an above average man for this average chick, you're telling men basically get out there, tap dance in the top hat and, and be excellent for these chicks.
you know. It's yeah, like, what you're yeah, saying is be think. excellent or pull up or like go above and beyond. I would view as like bare standards for being a decent human being. If your only way of getting a girl ever was you, like you, relying you, no, on the you, fact you, that she couldn't work, quick. that means you're a weak man. That means that you just don't I offer know, anything. You, you you're you're to, nothing. Like you're just a body that shows up at a factory, puts something together, and then goes home and thinks that that's enough to like land you some sort of relationship. And in the past it was, but I think it's a little bit sad that our standards would, would revert to that and that we think it should go back to that. Like, oh God, like this woman can work a, a job and now the fact that my paycheck isn't enough to win me a wife means that I'm completely and totally lost and hopeless, I think it's time to like step up and like be an actual decent person, like figure out how to be uh, emotionally available in a relationship, figure out how to be a good partner, figure out how to make a woman date you other than the fact that like society says she's not allowed to work a job and get a paycheck. I absolutely love it. For those of you that are still preferring black men, that's crazy. This white man sat here with purple hair and just roasted the shit out of your men he couldn't even say anything he read them and then just stopped talking he's telling your men you need to at least do the bare minimum another grown man having to tell black men that is absolutely insane and you talking about their gods what a weak fucking god all right it's time to go ladies i appreciate y'all coming up love y'all to pieces Bye, ladies. Bye, Bye, everyone. Good night. Peace and blessings, my sisters. Thank you.